Hello everyone, welcome back to the to Dan the Psychologist. Uh, today we are here with uh, uh, my friend uh, Daphne. So we're going to talk about personality disorders and uh, specifically histonic personality disorder. And so before we delve into histonic personality disorder, I would like us to learn what uh, personality disorder is first. So I'll let uh, Daphne introduce herself and uh, take us through some of this uh, definition of uh, personality disorder. So welcome Daphne. Thank you Dan. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, my name is Daphne, I'm a counseling psychologist and today I'll be taking you through a personality disorder called histrionic personality disorder. But I'll firstly begin by uh, defining what a personality disorder is. And a, person, a personality disorder is a rigid or unhealthy pattern of behavior that affects somebody's thinking, somebody's functioning, and somebody's way of behavior. Yes. Yes. So you find that a, a person, a, a person that has that personality disorder, tends to to perceive things and situations yes. differently compared to a normal person. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. And so, um, I would like us to go directly into. Uh, histonic personality disorder and so just as we did with personality disorder I would like us to know exactly when we're talking about histonic personality disorder what is it that we are talking about? Well when we speak of a uh, histrionic personality disorder yeah. it is a mental condition that affects like I said earlier it also affects the way somebody uh, perceives thinks and relates with others mm -hmm. yes so um just wait, to, wait, oh, sorry okay, okay. yes mm -hmm. just to add on that mm -hmm. uh genes have a role to play in this mm -hmm. or if it, sometimes if it is not genes you find it is the environment that mm -hmm. somebody is in mm -hmm. that could trigger this histrionic personality disorder mm -hmm. yes. okay so um as we all have learned in um, when we are talking about mental health we find that most of them are uh, caused by either our environment, either genes, or maybe substances we introduce into our bodies, or uh, uh, things that exp experiences that we go through in life. So, uh, what makes uh, histonic personality disorder unique in a way that its symptoms can be differentiated from others that we know? So, uh, in short, I'm asking. Uh, what are some of the symptoms of uh, histonic personality disorder that are unique to itself? Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. uh, well, with histrionic personality disorder, yeah. they have uh, symptoms which are actually obvious or which are uh, easy, which are very easy to diagnose. Mm -hmm. So the first one is usually you find that the person wants to be the center of attention most of the time. Yeah. Once this person is not the center of attention in any, any kind of society or gathering, you find that this person is very uncomfortable there yeah. because they are not the center of attention. Then secondly, they usually uh, worry so much about their physical appearance. Mm -hmm. They tend to want to dress, to try and dress and be the smartest person or the one that is more outstanding than the rest. Mm -hmm. That is why they end up dressing up in a way that they they are dressed in a very provocative way. Mm -hmm. So you find that the dress maybe is too tight, you find that the dress is too short, or something that really has to be a bit off compared to the normal dress code. Mm -hmm. yes. So this kind of uh, pressure to, to be the center of attention, you find that they are usually forced to dress up in a way that is very provocative. Yeah. Yes, then that way they have your attention. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then uh, the other, other symptom is... Uh, they have this rap rapid rapid and shallow change of moods. Yeah. One minute they are happy, then the other minute they are sad. Mm. Yes. And um, they also have a style of speech that is uh, excessively that is excessively uh, should I say catches your attention, that style of speech. Mm -hmm. You find that uh, it is uh, it impresses you. Yeah. But it also lacks in detail. Yes. So they are a bit dramatic in a yes, way. Yes, yes. They are also very dramatic. Mm -hmm. Still in their uh, style of speech, you find that they are ex 
excessively dramatic and you find that uh, their kind of uh, style of speech yeah. is so it, it impresses you and you can think that oh I think this is really nice mm-hmm. whatever she's trying to submit but then when you as you continue to speak to her or him you find that it lacks in detail mm-hmm. so in short it is it is kind of fake yes yes so that kind of style of speech helps them to to get the kind of attention that they are looking for mm-hmm. yes okay so um Oh, oh. Are there any other, maybe other symptoms that maybe uh, we have left out? Yes, uh, mm-hmm. there is one last other sign and symptom. Mm-hmm. They tend to to see relationships to tend to be closer than they actually are. Mm-hmm. They tend to, um, to interpret a relationship differently than it actually is. So, for example, you might find she's just a friend. Mm-hmm. She's you're just trying to be nice to her, or she's just a colleague at work. Uh, they tend to look at it like maybe now this person might try to make uh, advances at me you're actually trying to be nice to them mm. so they tend to perceive the relationship to actually be closer than it actually is yeah so for them when you're starting a relationship with them yeah. even if it is a romantic relationship for them they have already moved forward mm-hmm. even they are kind of thinking about marriage thinking about children before you even take the baby steps mm-hmm. in that romantic relationship yeah they tend to to move faster than even the actual relationship or if it is just a casual relationship they tend to to think it is closer than it actually is mm. yes so uh Daphne, you talked about work and um somehow i i remember that uh histonic personality disorders people with histonic personality disorder uh, may find it a bit hard coping with or relating with the uh, people at work so uh would you mind at, at least telling us a little about how their interactions at work might turn out to be. Well, you will find that someone with histrionic personality disorder, yeah. they will want always be the center of attention, mm-hmm. even at work, mm-hmm. or any other setting, or even if it's school, mm-hmm. they will always stand out. So you'll find that this definitely brings even issues in competition with them at work. Mm-hmm. They always want to even compete with the boss, they mm-hmm. always want to compete with the colleagues mm-hmm. in a very not that competing is bad, but yeah. in a very unhealthy way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you'll find that uh, they'll do anything to be the center. So that alone could uh, bring relationships at work to be very difficult with this person. Mm-hmm. Yes, so they tend to to fail having a good relationship at, at work mm-hmm. and also the way they dress the fact that it's it's very provocative this could make people at work feel uncomfortable with them mm-hmm. then also you find that at work uh, this person tends to think that the relationships are closer than what they actually, what they actually are, are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you'll find that this person is just a mere colleague yeah. and now uh, this person with this disorder always thinks that all the colleagues, each of them mm. kind of wants to make advances at her or has actually made an advance at her and she will actually tend to think it's true, she will believe in it mm-hmm. even when it's not true. Yes. So, uh, thanks very much. You're and welcome. now, I was wondering, um, maybe in terms of lifestyle, uh, could you tell us a little bit maybe about how, they, how their lifestyle looks like? Do they live in a life that... Uh, you can say it's a normal one or uh, uh, exaggerated or such kind. Okay. Mm. About the <coughs> lifestyle of a histrionic personality disorder mm. sufferer, yeah. you will find that once they are in a, a group of friends, yeah. they are easily influenced. Mm-hmm. They don't have, should I say, principles or values in life. Mm. They tend to easily be influenced by others. And this usually tends to, to 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 end in a sad way because once yeah. you are influenced by others you find that you not achieve your goals mm-hmm. and your dreams mm-hmm. so they they have that kind of lifestyle whereby they they're easily influenced by others and if they fail in life mm-hmm. or if the, they are they do not succeed in in something yeah. they tend to easily get depressed that is the one of the other other uh weakness that they have mm. they tend to easily fall into depression because things have not turned out the way they wanted them to turn out and mm. it's usually really sad yeah 
So you'll find that also still when it comes to their lifestyle, they really dress in a very provocative way, like I said earlier. Mm. You'll find that someone dresses in a way that is very in- inappropriate mm-hmm. at work, out there, just a birthday, someone is dressed in a very inappropriate way, mm. the way they, they speak. Because of that style mm. of speech, you find that they, they carry along with them so many lies, mm. and even sometimes they force an accent just to to pull the crowd, you know, the attention. Mm. Yeah. So you find that they'll end up doing anything to to, to pull attention for, from people. So and this helps them to uh, this uh, makes them it, it 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 makes them to should I say to violate the moral principles that as human beings we have in society. Mm-hmm. You find that they have violated them because they lost their way mm. along along their upbringing or, or along their should I say their life and journey of life. Mm-hmm. You find that someone lost it and their morals they have officially violated their morals and they are uh, they, have, they are at at the peak of doing anything mm. to get people's attention. attention. Yes. Okay. So, um, maybe in terms of shopping, do uh, what kind of things will attract them? Well, they will choose things like brands mm. because they know that when they put on a brand, let's say a Louis Vuitton shoe mm. that you look at. If they hold a Gucci bag, mm-hmm. if they if they use a, a Versace, uh, let's say perfume mm. or, or or any other material, Balenciaga yeah, shoe. yes, mm. you will find that they will go out of their way to drive the latest cars or branded cars. Mm. Let's say, for example, a BMW. You will find that they'll do anything to achieve these things, mm-hmm. and not because they really want them, but because they want to show society that they can actually have all these things and automatically if they have these brands on them mm. they will put attention from people yeah and people will start to think that they're actually very special mm. or that they're actually very brilliant yes so you find that they will actually do anything to to have these brands on them mm. yes it's like this they walk along with the brands yeah, they will even go an extra mile to make friends who who make an impression in society. Mm-hmm. Yes, they will not follow friends that are real, but they will tend to follow friends that have a brand on them. Mm-hmm. Friends that are driving the, the you fancy know, cars, the bougie cars mm-hmm. yes, the very nice dress code, very nice uh, style of speech. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you find that they will try to look out for such friends, but not the ordinary friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so in short, you find that actually their lifestyle is all fake. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, thanks for that insight. So, um, I was wondering, because uh, everything that is a, a defect can always have a solution to it. So, uh, what are some of the interventions that can be uh, used to help people, <coughs> help people with uh, histrionic personality disorders uh, at least live better with their lives? And uh, well, at that, um, is it really easy for them to? Is it possible for them to live a normal life? Well, uh, thank you for that. Yeah. The, when it comes to the interventions mm-hmm. for people with histrionic personality disorder, yeah. you find that they are limited to only two. And the first one is psychotherapy. Mm-hmm. That means uh, you would definitely think that maybe it's time to see a counselor mm-hmm. let's say it's whether it's voluntary or involuntary mm-hmm. and you find that you need to 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 walk the steps of therapy with, with the client mm-hmm. with, with, the, with the individual with the individual mm-hmm. so that uh, it helps them be aware of themselves yeah and it helps them be in control of themselves because through psychotherapy they will learn skills Mm -hmm. and they will also uh, be more self-aware in society and know their triggers and know their influences and know their highs and lows Mm -hmm. yeah so you'll find that uh, psychotherapy is one of the interventions and uh, the second one is medication you'll find that uh, there are some people who have 
this disorder mm. and uh, it is severe compared to being mild. Yeah. And you find that if it is severe, yes. this client must be on medication, especially to help with the moods. Mm-hmm. The moods and the, the antidepressants too, yeah. because they easily fall into depression. One, like whenever they fall sick, they fall they easily fall into depression Mm -hmm. when they break up with them they easily fall into depression so you find that uh, antidepressants would be one of the things that they would actually need Mm -hmm. for them to to function normally Mm -hmm. and for for the disorder not get into their daily day-to-day life Mm -hmm. yes so uh, with medication and psychotherapy Mm -hmm. those are the only two interventions for them yes but uh, I wouldn't lie to you that it can heal Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, it can either be genetical, mm-hmm. and this is something that uh, someone could get from the parents or one of the relatives, mm. but also it is also something that could be caused by the environment. Mm-hmm. Most of the people you find that they live in a very competitive environment, yeah. and it all starts off really small. You find that this person is okay, and then uh, she gets into a group of friends, or he gets into a group of friends, yeah. and you find that this person is starting to get uh, pressured by the friends. Mm. So this kind of uh, way of trying to admire the friend's lifestyle mm. starts to, to develop and grow. And then you find that now it's getting out of control. Mm. So you find that it has now developed into a disorder. Let's take an example of people in the entertainment sector. Mm. We shall look at actors, we shall look at musicians, we shall look at uh, role models mm. or uh, let's say people who are into sports. Yeah, you find that it's a very competitive world out there. Yeah. And you find that to make it, you really have to be a f- you really have to be people's fun, you know. Mm-hmm. Everyone says, wow, I, I, I look up to you, please. So you find that uh, someone really has to work so hard to be the center of attention out there mm-hmm. in the entertainment sector. Mm-hmm. So this kind of pressure has actually put uh, a lot of uh, stress to people to try and cope up with the, with the competition yeah. in the entertainment sector. And you find that actually someone has developed this kind of disorder mm-hmm. because they lost themselves along the way. Yeah, they reach an extent of I will do anything mm-hmm. to win more fans. I will do anything to win more subscribers. Mm-hmm. So this definitely leads into some of these mental disorders. Yes. So some people, it actually simply the environment. Some mm-hmm. some some people, it's actually something that they could adopt from schools. You find that they are in a school where they are in a group of friends who are very competitive. Yeah. Who dresses the best at school, who has uh, the best suitcase and stuff like that, whose parents are the richest, and you find that it grows just like that. Mm. Yeah. So this histrionic personality disorder targets anyone. Mm. It's it, it's not only in only in the in the in the entertainment sector, but anyone that is in an area where there is a lot of competition mm. tends to develop this disorder. this kind of disorder. Yes. Okay. So. Um, Moving on, there is. Um, I, I would also like to add on top of uh, the part that you said they are able to. They, are, uh, they have high possibility of developing depression. Uh, we also have people developing and a lot of anxiety in the process. So I think when you start feeling like uh, you developing this kind of disorder, uh, you also need to watch out for things like anxiety. And so, um, Daphne. Uh, having said what we've said, um, are there any other complications that can come or can arise from uh, histonic personality disorder? Well, you'll find that with personality, that uh, histonic personality disorder, yeah. it will affect um, this person's interpersonal relationships. Mm-hmm. You'll find that the if it is a marriage, yeah. it tends to it tends to struggle, mm. the marriage struggles, because the other person is in their own world. Mm. So you find that uh, if, for example, let's say you're married to this person, mm. and uh, she goes out there and she sees her friends, or she saw some people mm-hmm. living a very good lifestyle, they have a very big house, they seem to have it all, you know, mm. financially. Yeah. So she's this kind of person who will get home and be depressed, you know, and actually tell the husband, we cannot continue to live like this. 
Haven't you seen how so and so lives, you know? Haven't you not seen how uh, other people are making it? What's our plan? What's our goal? Mm. And this tends to, to weigh the other spouse so low. It even brings the self esteem of the other, other spouse so low. And you find that the whole thing is all about competition, mm. it is not real. And this weighs the other, other spouse so low. So you find that. Uh, the relationships tend to struggle a lot mm. and if she meets another person that is better than the husband it chances are high that she can even meet the husband mm. for that other person yes so uh, they tend to 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 live that kind of competitive world of trying to be the center of attention in society so they would even try to push the spouse to try and make it and be that center of attention which will help them also mm. be the centers of, of attention yes so uh, I earlier didn't mention this, but uh, research shows that uh, the females mm-hmm. or the women yeah. are at, at a bigger percentage of having uh, this histrionic personality disorder compared to the men. Mm. Yes. Then also uh, the other complication it would bring about is um, the way how they react to failures or mm-hmm. losses is different from a normal person then they tend to easily fall into depression mm. immediately. They do not know how to take it a day at a time. They don't know how to to, to go through a loss mm. or uh, to fail at something. Once they fail or they make a loss, they quickly fall into depression. Yeah. Mm. Yes, those are the complications that come with the histrionic personality disorder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in short, they, they have very short uh, or uh, weak shock absorbers yes. mm. okay so I think you've given us a very detailed uh, uh, information about histrionic personality disorder and I'm very grateful for this insight and uh, now if uh, you would like to talk directly to someone outside there uh, what would you like to tell them well uh, mm-hmm. if you know anyone that has this histrionic personality disorder mm-hmm. or if you think that you have the histrionic personality disorder it is not it's not a bad thing well it is manageable mm-hmm. and uh, if you could only get to let's say a psychologist or a psychiatrist and they could diagnose you because uh, some people might actually have simil- similar characteristics mm-hmm. and you find that they do not have that disorder they simply have the similar characteristics. characteristics. Yes. But if you find that you suspect yourself or you know someone that does, the first thing to do is definitely to seek help mm-hmm. from a psychologist or a psychiatrist so they could confirm this to you. Mm-hmm. And after they have confirmed this to you, you would have psychotherapy sessions with them and this would help you to manage yourself better. But usually with uh, these personality disorders, it is always advisable to have a therapist all throughout. Mm. This helps you keep on on track because usually with these personality disorders, if not addressed and if not helped uh, with with, uh, a mental health practitioner, you find that someone will lose their way Mm. and uh, they will be totally off in society and this could, could lead to bigger damages, you know. Yeah, so if you know anyone that does have it or if you suspect someone that does have it or if you think that you have it yourself mm. you just simply seek help from an, uh, a mental health practitioner mm-hmm. thank you yeah. so uh, before I finish um, I would like to also inform you that uh, this personality disorder its offset is mostly uh, it ranges where between adulthood maybe starting from 16 depending on uh, a country so it can be either 16 or 18 uh, onwards so if you see some of these characteristics in a person uh, do not be quick to judge do not be quick to diagnose so remember also that uh, you should not be diagnosing yourself if you suspect yourself of having this you need to seek help and get a professional to diagnose you it might just be something that you're going through that is making you behave the way you behave but uh, you should not be you should not be uh, diagnosing yourself many many uh, many a times so uh, as I leave please if you are new here uh, like this video share it with your friends if you find this information uh, constructive to you also uh, 
tell tell them to subscribe so that we can be able to give you more of uh, these videos and thank you very much for watching ciao ciao